Hey, it's Jared with State of Tech. I'm actually on top of my trailer to talk about the Renogy 800 watt solar kit that I installed. Now this was an upgrade. This wasn't just a, a, a plain install. My trailer actually came with a almost 200 watt solar panel installed and a charge controller. So it was a little bit of a challenge actually doing this install because there are already wires ran. It wasn't just as simple as running new wires. I actually had to figure out where things went and replace some things and it was an interesting install process. So for those of you that are looking to upgrade solar on your travel trailer, whether it be a smaller travel trailer or a larger fifth wheel, it's very possible and it's not really too challenging. You just have to know what to look for and that's what we're going to talk about in this video. So up on top of the trailer here I have the 800 watt array and I installed it in a way that I wish that I had done things a little bit differently where I place these panels. Now uh, in the past I've installed a setup before actually a Renogy 400 watt system and that 400 watt system was pretty easy to install because it was just four panels and it wasn't super high voltage or amperage. I was able to wire them all in series and it was a simple process. But with eight panels you really have to start to think about placement and how you're going to wire these things up and that became a little bit of a challenge for me. Thinking that I was going to be able to wire all of these in series I just put my panels down, attached them to the trailer, glued them down, and started hooking things up and quickly realized that I was over voltage. That was something that wasn't clearly defined in the information that was provided with this kit. Of course, if I had gone and read the Renogy charge controller manual, I would have seen that but I wasn't really thinking about the voltage versus the amperage. I knew that I didn't want to increase the amperage because I didn't want to increase the size of the wire that I was going to be using, but the voltage wasn't something that was even on my radar. So I ended up going with a parallel series hybrid where each two panels are in series and then they're all connected in parallel. And so what that does is it brings down the voltage. So now I was underneath that 150 volt limit it while not increasing the amperage so much that I was going to have to increase the size of the wires, which ended up working out really well. So we're going to get down off of the roof and we're going to start to look at some of this install and I'm going to walk you through everything that I had to do to upgrade the solar on my trailer. Now let's take a look at the battery bay. What I have here is two Battleborn batteries. These are the GC3 batteries and they're quite large. I wanted capacity with this setup so that we could be off grid and have a, a lot of available power to us. My goal here is to eventually install an inverter that would allow us to power AC devices such as blenders, microwave, stuff like that. Uh, off of these batteries. And so with the 800 watt solar combined with these batteries, I felt confident that we would be able to utilize a lot of electricity throughout the evening and still have enough power to get us through the full evening if we needed to use our heater. And then of course, with the 800 watts um, up on top of the trailer, being able to top these batteries off every day and keep us going. So the batteries here, of course, are wired to maintain 12 volts. I didn't want to change the voltage of the system here. And back in the corner, I'll show you a better shot of it, is the Renogy 60 amp charge controller. That is the brain of this entire system that takes all of the energy that's coming in through those solar panels and puts it into these batteries. Now you'll have to forgive my cable management. There are some things that I'm still finishing up in here. This is the Renogy 60 amp MPPT charge controller. And as I mentioned, this is the brain of the operation here. All of the solar panels come in through the trailer, through the roof of the trailer, uh, and I utilized some of the existing cabling that was already there from the previous uh, charge controller and that single panel that was up top. So I spliced into that and extended the wires all the way here. So I bypassed everything that was in the trailer. We'll talk a little bit more about that when we get inside the trailer. But I ran that directly here to the MPPT charge controller. And the charge controller then dumps out into the battery so that it charges the batteries. And I'm also using the ability to monitor the consumption of electricity through the 
charge controller. This was something that I didn't hook up in my last configuration, but I'm running the power directly through the charge controller and then the charge controller goes out to the trailer. So that way I can power the trailer on and off completely by using the app for the Rover here, the 60 amp MPPT charge controller. Right here is the opening where the original charge controller was. I actually at first just thought that it was a meter that told me how much power I had left in the batteries, kind of like a display that the MPP uh, 60 amp has, but it was actually the entire charge controller unit was mounted right here in the wall. That was actually good because the actual solar panel cables that come in through the roof ran right past this area here. And I thought to myself, this is gonna be simple. All I have to do is pull out that panel, splice those wires together, and then find them on the other end where they come out on the batteries. Well, unfortunately, that's not how it worked. They didn't come out over on the batteries. Those cables went somewhere else in the trailer, and I found combined their charging connections with other charging connections that the trailer has. That means I wasn't able to increase the amount of voltage drastically through that cable because I didn't know where else it went. It does seem that these cables that come down and then out of the charge controller that was in the wall here end up connecting somewhere with the same connection that comes from the vehicle that would allow the alternator from the towing vehicle to charge the trailer. So after I figured that out, I realized the easiest thing to do was to run new cables from here all the way down to the battery bay and then just splice those cables in here and connect those directly to the charge controller down in the battery bay that we already looked at. That meant figuring out how I was gonna get the wires down this wall and ran down through the rest of the trailer. That actually ended up being pretty simple because down below this opening here at the bottom of the wall is the breaker box that also has the fuses and the charge controller that charges the batteries when connected to shore power. And so everything was right there. It just meant running the new wires down there and then on the other end of the trailer, snaking those through, which uh, just meant reaching across and, and kind of grabbing the cables and pulling them and snaking them through the trailer to the battery bay. It wasn't that challenging. Now, the reason that I still have an opening here is because I have two cables that I've also ran that I haven't connected yet. One is for a new display that is a Renogy display that will allow me to see where my batteries are at, uh, how much power consumption and stuff like that. So it'll be great to have that information on a display in the trailer because I'm the only one with the Bluetooth app on my phone. I can monitor that stuff on my phone, but everybody else that's in the trailer isn't gonna have that app installed. So having the panel right here will be useful. I also ran the ethernet cable wire that connects the Renogy 2000 watt inverter from the switch that allows you to power it on and off to the inverter itself. I figured that whether I went with that 2000 watt or ended up going with their 3000 watt, I might as well run that while I had everything open. So I have that cable there and I just have it taped to the, ta the cable for the, uh, the panel that's gonna be installed. Now to fill in this hole, I bought a piece of Lexan that I'm gonna go ahead and cut and put in place uh, temporarily to cover up this opening. And then eventually I'll cut a hole in that Lexan for the display to go in this place. So I do have a bit more that I need to tidy up on this installation. One of the things I need to do is create a couple of patch cables for the system up top. It shouldn't have needed patch cables, but as I mentioned at the beginning, if I had done my panel layout a little bit differently, I could have just connected everything together and it would have been simple. Uh, another thing that I learned through this process is just to pay attention to the voltage and the amperage. Uh, doing that math ahead of time is gonna save you a lot of trouble. Figuring out what the output is of the panels that you're going with and multiplying that by the amount of panels that you're gonna be utilizing to figure out whether or not your charge controller can handle that and your cabling is sufficient. So for this setup, I needed to stay under that 150 volt limit of the Renogy 60 amp charge controller and I was able to bring that down to around 115. What's nice about that is that I have a little bit of a buffer. Should I have a really intense Sunday that could bring the voltage of those panels up a little bit, I'm not going to have to worry about over volting. 
On the flip side of that, the amperage did not come up much and the amperage is sufficient for the cable size that I am running. I didn't want to have to run any larger cables than what uh, came with the kit and I didn't have to. What I did have to do is buy some additional cable because the length of the charge controller was a little bit further away from where I was splicing in and so I did have to buy some additional cable so I went also with Renogy cable just to make sure that I'm using all of the same stuff. So the system has performed flawlessly since I completed my install. We went on a one month long road trip where about 90% of that time we were fully off grid. We were utilizing Starlink internet, TVs, all sorts of stuff the entire time that we were on the trip and running all of that off of our solar power here and the battery bank and didn't have any issues. There were a few nights where it was kind of cold and we ran the heater, didn't have any issues all night. The next morning the batteries were topped off immediately. Now I still don't have the inverter installed that runs power directly through the trailer, but I was using inverters through this process so that we can run things like fans, our air fryer, and stuff like that. And all of that we were running off of battery power. The only time that we utilized a generator was when we needed our air conditioning. And it was really nice not to have to use the generator for anything other than air conditioning. And I'm looking for a solution for that. Maybe a few more batteries and a bigger inverter that could handle that kind of load but for now the generator as a backup option and for those few times that we actually need air conditioning is not really a hassle to have on board and not having to pull that out because we have so much energy on board that we could produce is great. Now on this entire trip the solar setup produced just over 20 kilowatt hours of energy and so it was charging every single day uh, in the mornings as we utilized power overnight when there wasn't enough light to do any charging and then throughout the day we didn't really bother with making sure that things were completely turned off because we knew that we had that additional energy and we weren't going to run into power issues so utilizing devices and things charging cell phones, charging tablets, all of that good stuff. And, and this was a longer trip. You know, it had elements of camping because we were boondocking. We were out in the middle of nowhere. Sometimes we were at campgrounds, but we also wanted to have some of the comforts of home because we were going to be gone for so long. So the Renogy setup has really just been absolutely fantastic. This is the second Renogy setup that I've owned. The solar panels are great. The charge controller is fantastic, and I can't recommend Renogy equipment highly enough. So I hope that this video helped you if you're considering doing a solar upgrade of your own or even just a fresh install on your trailer. It is definitely something that you can achieve on your own. You really just have to think through it, do some planning, and understand your trailer before you get started. So that way you don't make any mistakes or any errors along the way putting holes in places where you don't need them uh, and making sure that you're running wires where they need to go. Um, it's, it, it's a little bit of a nerve wracking install just because you are dealing with electricity and electricity can be, you know, just kind of elusive at times, but it's definitely something that you can do with some planning and understanding. The Renogy documentation is pretty good. Uh, it did miss a few things just in looking at this as a kit, but it has all the information that you need to make this happen. With videos like this and videos that other people have produced online, it's definitely something that you can achieve on your own. And it's very rewarding to be able to put a system like this together and go off grid and be self-sufficient. So if you're deciding to do something like that, I'd highly appreciate you using the links down in the description below. It lets Renogy know that I sent you that way um, and uh, encourages me to produce more content like this. I'll do a full review of the Renogy setup soon, but I hope that this video helped you understand a little bit of of what the install process looks like and some of the things that you might have to consider when installing or upgrading your solar in your trailer. Thanks so much for checking out this video. Give it a thumbs up if you found it useful. Subscribe to the channel here on State of Tech for more videos from me and I hope to see you back in another one soon. Take care.